everybody. Welcome back. It is another episode of DadCast. I am JP. He is Nick Martin. How are you, bud? What's up? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm great. You know, you mentioned off the air that you, you, you never see me in anything other than a hoodie or a t-shirt. So I know, you know, I, I mixed it up a little bit going, going flannel action today. Uh, and I like it. I dig it. I dig it. You it. look good. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Today on the show, man, they just, the, the stars, they keep coming to DadCast and we love it. Um, you may know of him from such amazing television shows, such as Treehouse Masters that aired on Animal Planet a few years back. On the show today, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Pete Nelson. How are you, sir? Why? Wonderful, especially with an introduction like that. Thank you, JP. <laughs> you are very welcome, man. We're very glad you're here on the show. If you weren't aware of what DadCast is, the premise is, for the most part, we like to talk our journey as fathers, you know, from the beginning, the middle, and uh, everything in between leading up to this very moment that we are together today. Now, I do have to forewarn you, however, we do tend to go off the rails sometimes on this show, and by tend to, every single time. So just be forewarned. Excellent. I, uh, I tend to digress myself. So if I start going too far off, just bring me back. Fair enough. I'll just reel you back in, man. All right. Very first question. It is the rite of passage here on DadCast. And since Nick hasn't said a word yet, I'm going to let Nick ask it. Are you a dad? I am certainly a dad. My goodness. I am a dad three times over and now a grandfather to two grandkids. And Oh, that's awesome. It's just the best. The awesome. Best. How old are your kids, boys, girls, all that good stuff? I have a, a daughter, Emily, 32 years old, um, basically my boss. And I <laughs> only half jokingly say she's firm but fair. And uh, I appreciate it. And my twin boys just turned 30 in May, Henry and Charlie. And uh, they're both treehouse builders out there and, you know, being carpenters and in fact, I've got Charlie right here nearby. I hope he's not listening. Oh, man, he might be listening here. He's you, you, you can bring him on to say hi if you want. Yeah, so it's okay. Wrong. Bring him Charlie, on. you over there? Yeah. Oh, he's there. Bring him in. Bring him in. <laughs> Two and a half minutes in, and we're getting a guest appearance with Charlie. <laughs> Come in and say hello What's to Charlie up? Nelson. How's it going, What's Charlie? Up? I was just wanting to see if you uh, appreciated my treehouse that I'm in right now. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's wicked. It's pretty impressive, huh? <laughs> That is impressive. A ten yeah. second Google search background later. <laughs> here we go. Well done, you're proud. <laughs> Do we let him go now? I mean, I, we're probably going to get deep about this guy. Maybe we should send him into the yard, and he can get back to work. Yeah, yeah, get back to work. But if you can yeah. keep an ear out, um, you might get a little bit of gold from Dad that you can either use for blackmail oh. material in the future, or uh, you know, use as a really good source for that Christmas card coming up. You never know. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll stick her. All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. So I find another question that immediately pops up into my head is, uh, Pete, how old were you when you had your first child? Because what, were you like 10, 12? Oh, You're looking good, man. Kind words. Wow, listen to you. JP, I'm already in love with you, man. <laughs> let's uh, let's do the math. 62, I was born. I, I turned 60 this year. Uh -oh. And 1990 was Emily. So easy math, 28. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So 28. let's take you back to that 28 or 32 and a half years ago, give or take, um, you were, you know, it was a fateful day and you were notified somehow, some way that you were in fact going to become a dad for the very first time. Can you remember those emotions, the feelings that went through that day? Oh yeah. No, I'll never forget. Of course. And I was in, um, Seattle. I, at the time I was building single family houses and, um, they were always a very stressful deal. I was you know, fairly new to the area. I, I moved um, from where we went to school. My wife and I met in Colorado and she decided Seattle was the place to be. And I thought, oh my gosh, rainy and, and wet. But um, the deal was made that I could be a contractor, single family house, build them. You know, I had a mentor in Colorado Springs that, that did just this. And I thought, what a great gig. And so nonetheless, I'm, I'm you know, always fighting the rain and the, the scary, um, you know, possible issues when you, when you're opening up a, a, a big foundation. And, and when Emily was born in February, we were in the middle of a winter and uh, 
I'll never forget being on the side of this hill in Seattle with the rain coming down and thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I've got trouble here. This could all just cave in on me. And and then got the call that, in fact, Judy is in labor and boom, everything just melted away. And I got to go to the hospital and be with her and and it changed everything. Emily Nelson came out firing. I mean, she, she <laughs> it was a 33-hour labor. Though. Oh, it was one of those. Oh man, you know, poor Jude. And, um, and yet it was, you know, that, that life changing thing. And it was forever after, uh, one of the greatest, truly greatest moments, surely in any, any dad's life. But Emily is one special person and little did I know how much my life would change when she was born. <laughs> Yeah, in a good way. Yeah, in a good it, way. I don't think any of us ever truly do realize that until it actually happens. So, dads mm -hmm. out there, or, or or soon to be dads, or someone watching this show right now who's never even given it a second thought, um, it's not scary. It's again the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. I, I can attest for Nick as well, and you just heard Pete say it as well. So, don't be afraid of it, man. It's it's the greatest adventure that has ever been bestowed upon me, man. And uh, yeah, that's great. You that get is great. Of it when they're two and three years old, that's when you start to see. That's when it gets scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no one said it, it wasn't scary. Yeah. They start talking back. They start getting a personality. Oh man! Now yeah. was yeah. now was now was Emily when uh, in her in her early teens? Did you uh, did you have any issues? Was there any pushback? Was there the typical oh, oh, you know yeah, teenager yeah. stuff no, with you? I think the hardest part for me, um, and I I guess it's obviously it's different for everyone, but I mean, in general, I feel like your daughters look up to their dads, you know, they're even in their teens. I remember Emily still, um, you know, it's a strong word, but she showed a certain reverence for her father, whereas it was not the same with her mother. And, um, and that was, was torturous. I mean, both for me to see and for, for Judy, my, my sweet wife, who's, you know, probably also <laughs> right there. So, um, but, but true to say that she is a true angel of a person just beyond kind and, and patient. And, and she had a, a, a daughter that really was so fiery. And, you know, I watched the interaction there and just felt like, Oh God, this is, this is tough. I mean, this, this is, I guess, fairly common, you know, sometimes daughters and mom's butt heads a bit and and so i was uh, it felt to me anyway like like i was apart from that and had this special stature in their in their inner teens you know and this right. this evaporated uh, soon thereafter i would have to say but um but you know it was it was a tough time daughters daughters and dads there's a special bond sometimes daughters and moms obviously they have their special bonds too and they certainly do now i mean I can tell you, you know, fast forward to her age at this point and talk about reverence. I mean, Emily absolutely worships the ground as she should that her mother walks on. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, I'm in the middle of it. Nick is in the middle of it. My yeah. oldest is going to be 18 in December. So she has been, uh, you know, we are thick in that pushback phase of oh. her life and so uh, Nick tough. as well, you know, oh, it, yeah. But we're looking forward to the fact that we're now hopefully on the downhill portion back to where she's going to love us again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They say they say in their early twenties that begins to show itself, and and so yeah, that's boy, that's a long way off, guys. I'm yeah, sorry. It, it, it my, <laughs> it is. And, and I've got my nine year old, my baby girl, to to look forward to too for all that. There's a little I have to show. There's a well, is she got a? Um, she's smelling is, a rose. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, uh, yeah, I got that so, to look so forward to. Tell me now, JP, you, yeah. you've got three or two? What, three kids. kids. I have my uh, I have two daughters and a son. Well, the oldest is my stepdaughter, but, you know, it's my daughter uh -huh. for all for all intense purposes. Sure. Um, her dad's in the life. He's a great guy. Uh, so she's got two oh, dads. Uh, uh -huh. My 12-year-old son and my nine-year-old baby girl. Oh. And if you ask Nick the same question, it might take <laughs> us the rest of this hour to get through. But go ahead, Nick. Tell us, Nick. So I have six kids and a baby on the way. So, oh my gosh. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'll have seven in January. Congratulations. That's yeah. so, oh, yeah, I, was I can almost only done. imagine. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it's weird. I was almost done. My youngest uh, is fifth is uh, 16 now or was 16. And then we decided to have more and 
almost done, still, son. You were done. I was done. I was. So there's a 16 done. year gap here. There's a 16 year gap. Yeah. Well, 14 year gap. So I have a two year old, and then we have a newborn that will be born on uh, January 31st. Oh my gosh! Wow. So yeah, Miracle. so, miracles. So yeah, miracles. It's, a, it's definitely weird jumping back into the whole being a dad of little ones kind of thing, where you know it's like it's accustomed to jumping in the car, going wherever I want to go, when I want to go and vacation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, Not we so much. Around. No, no, no. We, we try to go out to dinner with the two year old. It's a, it's a whole new, new ball game. It's like, <laughs> go to Red I Rock. remember, or do I remember? It's a vague memory, but yeah, it was, my wife says that she can't remember the first three years. Once the twins were born, that, that period of her life was pretty much gone in terms yeah. of her memory. Oh, very big memories. <laughs> now, when it comes to having your twins, the boys, um, yeah. how different is it, the dynamic between raising, in, in your personal experience, uh, the <laughs> dynamics raising a daughter versus raising a son? Because, you know, they're both in the house, but yeah. I know I speak from experience. I and I don't mean to, but they get treated differently. You know, I think so. What, what, um, what we loved watching so much was Emily was always a take charge kid. I mean, even by the time the kids, the boys were born, uh, she was two and, uh, she just instantly was in love with these two boys that showed up in her life and just thought, okay, she's the mama duck and she's going <laughs> to start, you know, getting these kids in line. And, you know, I, I just remember so clearly when they were a little bit older, you know, how she would, teach them, you know, she was the teacher and they were the kids and they were, you know, they, they were engaged. They weren't like maybe the, um, the most ideal pupils for the teacher at that very young age. And yet Emily was patient. And, you know, I, of course we've got these great videos. We had a little video camera, even back there in the earliest of nineties. And, and we, every now and then visit them and see how, you know, we'd be taking our standard home videos and, and Emily would invariably be there just like, pushing into the scene and grabbing her little brothers and just squeezing them, you know, just <laughs> like, and, you know, just dragging them around. It was just like, they were, they were dolls or something. She would just manhandle them and so cute. And, and she, you know, right from the beginning loved, loved her brothers. And it's clear to this day. I mean, uh, it's, it's just such a wonderful dynamic. And so we, we really had the, this extraordinary time. I mean, again, Judy did a lot of the work. I mean, she was breastfeeding all three of these kids and I'll, I'll just, I'll never forget waking up at that feeding hour, you know, in the middle of the night and look over and I just have this darts of her eyes coming down at me going, look at this, look, look at this, what you've created. Here. <laughs> and nothing much we could do as fathers, but we could just sympathize, I guess. And, and, and yet, um, you know, with Emily there, almost helping. I mean, I, I think Judy might chime in to say something different, but I always thought how wonderful it was to have that, that daughter that, that really was kind of taking charge and, and helping, you know, really, really helping. And, and I'm sure it wasn't always help, but she was, she was always right there in the thick of it sometimes stirring it up too. And yeah, um, of course yeah. that was leading me to my next question. Yeah. You're making it sound like, uh, you know, butterflies and rainbows, but any sibling <laughs> rivalry there, come on. Oh man. No, the boys. Well, you can imagine the boys that, that age of, as we were talking about earlier, the, the teen, teenage years were really hard. I mean, with the boys starting to swing, they're, they're tall. I'm six, three and, they're, they're right there with me. And, you know, as, as 14 year olds, they're gangly, you know, skinny as six o'clock and yeah. they can, they, you know, when you're trying to break things up, it got, it got hairy, you know, you, you're getting in there to say, Hey, 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 yeah. and then, it was boy, that, that, that was probably the toughest period, you know, and in, in, in terms of, you know, things getting, you know, sh shaken up was in those teenage years with the boys when they were rivals and, trying to, I don't know, get each other's goat and, and man, Charlie, Charlie was able to press Henry's buttons just with the most <laughs> simple words. And Henry had a short fuse still does, uh, but boy, he could get to him quick. And when things spiraled, 
Um, yeah, guys, you know, I, I don't know how detailed one wants to get into these things, but it's not pretty. And, you know, tears, my wife, especially just like, Oh, what, how is this happening? It's, it's I, for lack of a better way to put it, it's normal, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. it depends no. on how crazy it gets, you know, but I yeah. mean, it's, it's yeah. happening. My, my, uh, it's almost backwards in my family. My littlest, Avery, the nine-year-old, she knows how to push big brother's buttons. Like, the, and I, she doesn't even need to push the button. She can just look at him a certain way and, uh, yeah. and buttons are pushed. And then it's all chaos in the house. And, you know, I've got a good, what, she's nine. So we got nine more years to look forward to of that. Get more <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know, but it's 50-50, oh. you know, it's a lot of love and it's a lot of rivalry and a lot of pushing buttons. But yeah, I, and I, and I always... I like to take a moment when it's all happening, try not to get angry because one day, not far off, I'm going to miss that. Mm. And I put that in my head when it's happening and it, and it helps a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see the rivalry between Liam and his little baby sister to see kind of how that it's, dynamic goes. It's, it's going to be, be just like Sawyer and Avery, man. They're about the yeah. same age difference. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you'll see. <laughs> we'll Liam's see. Like a total, he's like a total mama's boy and he's like super sensitive, but he's also like super sharp and like, who, I, who knows? I, I, I have a feeling Sophie's going to be just a total pain in the butt and kind of, uh, kind of a little diva that's just, it's oh, mean. You're, just, you're diva. describing my family to a T right there, Nick. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> scared. Too. So Pete has, has, is Emily, your daughter, is she the one who provided you with a grandchild? She is. Okay. Two, as a matter of fact. I, oh, so, yeah. so she's the only one with the kids then. That's right. What That's is, right. I mean, I, I, I like to put myself in other people's shoes and their experiences. That is one experience that I, I can wait for, mind you. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm so looking forward to that emotion and that feeling when your daughter brings a child into this life, your blood yeah. bringing in new blood. How, how is that for you? I mean, that's gotta be the most greatest Astounding. thing. Astounding. You know, it just, um, I'd always heard and as you have, how wonderful it is. And you know, the, the idea that when, when you're done, you can just give them back. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> that is, is so true. And I mean, they're, Little Douglas is three and a half. Uh, let's see, he was born in January, so um, coming up on four. And then Sally, um, named after my mom, is a year and a half, born in May. And uh, and these kids just melt your heart, both of them. And you know, Douglas was going through a little stage this last year or so where. I wasn't as cool as he thought I was the year before, you know? Okay. And, and so um, that, that was a little heartbreaking, you know, I'm like, Oh, I can't believe that I'm responding in the way that I am, which is like, Oh, you little twerp. <laughs> Come on. <man. laughs> <We're>, <laughs> but you know, he, he's, he's back in a, in a big sense and that he's reengaged and, and uh, my, my nickname that he came up with, I love is Duda. So Duda is back. And, uh, and I'm, I'm enjoying just the most amazing things. Like the other day he said, geez, dude, I got a hangnail. I'm like a hangnail. What, what, how do you know about a hangnail? And I'm not sure I even know what a hangnail is, but <laughs> there's, there's little Douglas, you know, yeah. he's, he's advanced. You know, I think these kids, it, it appears to me that these kids are going to be able to solve the world's problems. I mean, they are so sharp and, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned by what this three and a half year old is, is telling me. And I'm, I'm listening to him, watching him, you know, the way he behaves in this crazed world of ours. And he's, he's smooth and cool as a cucumber. And I, I think the things that come out of his mouth, I, I just have faith now that, that, okay, some, these kids, they're going to grow up and, and, and fix all that we have messed up. <laughs> I, think I they certainly will. hope so. Does he, yeah. does Douglas get a uh, screen time, you know, iPads, iPhones type thing. Is he smart he with does. that? Yeah, well, he does. Well, there you sure. go. Same with my kids. You wonder how they get so smart. Well, yeah. I mean, the entirety of collectively the world's knowledge and information that has ever happened can be grabbed yeah. right there yeah. with one of these nowadays. And yeah. Here we are yeah. still looking at cat videos, but it's still, it's just <laughs> amazing that, you know, they can, they can do that through there. 
Really um, I got a pro tip for you, Pete. The next time uh, little Douglas decides you're not cool anymore, just yeah. randomly throw in an old episode of Treehouse Masters and oh, put man. it on TV <laughs> and then have him walk by and be look, oh, was it, is it Duda? Oh. Duda's on TV. Doesn't get much cooler than that. You know, we, we pulled that out about a year ago and it was magic. It was just so fun to see his response and like, there's mom, you know, she, yeah. there's, there's Duda. Oh, wait, there's dad, you know, cause Patrick, his father is in the, in a few, well, quite a few episodes. So it was, uh, it was just so such a delight to see that kid suddenly go, wait a minute. Yeah. He's, wait, that's you guys. <laughs> Awesome. So I've worked uh, radio for the past 20 years of my life, still do. Um, yeah. And, you know, within a 40 square mile radius of my hometown where I live here, um, mm -hmm. you could say I'm, I mean, kind of famous. Now I get yeah. out of that square miles and, and then I'm just, you know, no one knows who I am, but it's funny to yeah. see my son in particular's reaction. I don't think there's a day that we go out in public where someone recognizes me or, or says hello or whatnot. And he's finally oh, gotten yeah. used to it. But at the beginning he was just, he thought it was the greatest thing ever. And of course I beamed oh. and thought it was great. It happened in Vegas, Nick too. Did it? Yeah. Someone recognized yeah. me, I think from the podcast now um, nice. with Sawyer and my son's name is Sawyer. And he's just oh, great name. shakes his head, looks at me, goes, we can't even, <laughs> it's starting to happen now, dad. You're not even at home anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and Nick, it was like that last time that I went to Vegas before I got sick and uh, I was using the gym and the girl at the, the yeah. Gym counter is like, oh my God, you're one of the dads from Dadcast and took me into the better gym with the NFL players. <laughs> I was like, yes. Wow. wow. That's awesome. There That's you go. And, then, and then she told me, don't take any pictures. <laughs> so I was like, all right. <laughs> so How long have you been doing the Dadcast, guys? Almost two years. Yeah. Okay. No, actually, we're, we're over two years now. We're a little over two years. Okay. Yep. Well, you and this are, came to you obviously then during during the beginnings of COVID, and you thought maybe we should just you know capitalize on this Zoom stuff or something. That, I wasn't really to capitalize on it. It was more of a we both had personal stuff going on and kind of a way to blow off steam. And well, let's tell him. I, I mean, yeah, we, we haven't spoken right about it in a while, so this would be. I a good I'd time. love to hear that story. So, Nick, no, go ahead, Nick. You tell yours. I'll tell right. mine. All right. So, uh, so my son, my two-year-old was born in the middle of COVID and ended up in the NICU and I didn't get to see him Oh, so because of all the hospital regulations and stuff, we had to make a decision. Do we just let him go by himself and my wife and I come home or, and we were like, absolutely not. One of us has to stay. So my wife stayed, I went back to work and took care of the other kids. And I got to see him for an hour a week after the first three weeks. So the mm. first three weeks, there was no contact. And then after that, I was at one hour a week and I had to get all dressed up in the COVID safe crap that they had us wear. So, so I looked like an alien going in there. Yeah. Uh, and that lasted about three months. And then and, and when he got out of the hospital, they, he didn't know who I was. So it took a long time to bond with him. And then JP was going through some stuff. So JP. Yeah. So uh, my lady at the time um, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And mm -hmm. my, my lady at the time, let me, let me miss, you know, emphasize <laughs> the fact it is still my lady and has been for 13 years, the mother of yeah, our you. children, <laughs> but at the time she uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer, a very mm -hmm. aggressive and uh, ended up having a double mastectomy. And mm -hmm. that's tough. I mean, I can't even imagine. I can't even no. imagine um, no. a woman having to go through such a thing. Um, no. She has beaten it today. It is still gone. So oh, good okay. news. But at the time, um, there was a very, you know, a year mm. stretch where we don't know. And this, she had this surgery and this checkup and that treatment and this and that, um, mm. along with Nick going through uh, his issues with Liam in the hospital. So we came together and said, he's been trying to push me to do a podcast for, for a probably a year or two prior to even that happening. Oh, gosh, and okay. this was just the, the, the stars aligned to where, okay, let's start a podcast at, where we can initially just talk with each other and blow off some steam and, and we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. But we needed to come up with a name because you can't just start a podcast and just talk about whatever. Yeah. And I came yeah. up with the name Dadcast. We're two dads, and it has snowballed into what it is now, where two dads get to interview other celebrity dads about being dads. And here we yeah. are. And it's, yeah. you are real close to episode 100. I think you're going to end up being number 99. 
Oh, I hey, believe. That's, that's, a, so, that's a big, that is a big uh, mark. 100. It is. hundreds getting think, there. Uh, that's, that's huge. We did, we did, a, we did a little over a hundred episodes with the Treehouse Masters show. And I remember being really proud to get past that, that 100 and, and all the other marks, you know, the 75, 90, and I was keeping track. And I know you guys are because yeah. it's, it's work, you know, it's hard yeah. work that you do. And it's really fun when you get it in the can, so to speak. Yes, yeah, sir. And so we had a hundred coming up now. I don't know what the next milestone to be excited about is. Is it 200? Probably not. Is it 500? Sounds good. But I think a thousand is the next one where we go. <gasps> I don't know. You know Come what I mean? Now. Cut yourself some slack. <laughs> 250. <laughs> 250. Okay. Yeah. Episode 250. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm planting the seed then. We're going to have Pete Nelson back, and you're going to be episode 250. Oh, anytime. How about them anytime. apples? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Love that. Um, okay, so we do these episodes in two parts. Okay. So with that being said, don't go anywhere. Mr. Pete Nelson, thank you so very much for coming on DadCast. Um, we've got a whole lot more to talk with you about, so everyone watching and listening worldwide, wherever you may be, and however you may be listening, thank you so very much. And please make sure to subscribe to that channel, YouTube, if you're watching it there. Comment, subscribe, like, do all the good things, and we will catch you next week with part two with Mr. Pete Nelson of Treehouse Masters. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.